Hello everyone, welcome back to Learn How to Edit Stuff. My name is Ian and as of today, Gen 3 Alpha is available to the general public that has a paid runway account and I for one am very excited about it. If you don't know what Gen 3 Alpha is and you're watching this video anyway, first of all, thank you. But second of all, it is the newest generative video model available from Runway, and it is going to power all of the Runway tools that you all know and love. Now, of course, there's more information available online at runwayml.com if you want to dive in and look at some of the more technical details. But today for this video, we are going to show and not tell. Well, we're going to tell a little bit later, but it's mostly going to be show. Starting off with a banger montage of Gen 3 Alpha outputs. Let's go. So how do you access Gen 3 Alpha? It's very simple. From your paid Runway account, go to the text or image to video tool and select the Gen 3 Alpha model from the model dropdown at the top. Then you're gonna enter a prompt. Let's try a cinematic FPV shot of a giant iceberg floating in Arctic waters. The camera quickly orbits the iceberg. From here, you can select either a five second generation or a 10 second generation, then click generate. It takes about 60 seconds for a five second generation and 90 seconds for a 10 second generation, which is extremely fast, all things considered. And for now, the resolution is gonna be at 720p at 24 frames per second. But as we move forward into the future and new features are introduced, you're likely gonna be able to generate at higher resolutions. These incredible icebergs floating majestically through the frigid waters of the Arctic don't actually exist. They were generated by a rather extraordinary video generation model called Gen 3 Alpha. Okay, literally all bangers. But as editors, as content creators, why is this technology actually useful? Truly for me, and hopefully for you, there are many, many reasons why this technology is beneficial, but let's start off with a super practical one. Let's say for this very specific example, I, the editor, am working on a piece of content involving a scientist going out into the Arctic and there's interviews and there's like B-roll of penguins and all this stuff, but when they were shooting the actual show, the drone couldn't fly because it was too cold, the Arctic winds were too intense, whatever, they couldn't get the drone in the air, and they have no drone footage of the Arctic landscape that they were hoping to get during production. Well, guess what? I now have drone footage that I can contribute to this project that we didn't actually have to fly a drone for in the Arctic. We didn't have to pay a crew to go out there for a day rate. We didn't have to worry about technical malfunctions on the day of the shoot. I can generate exactly what I need for the shoot so I can fill in that gap between production and post-production. And I am now adding value to this episode or to the series or documentary or whatever, not just from a visual standpoint, but from a monetary standpoint as well. So being able to generate missing footage, obviously a huge value add for editors but let's try something a bit more experimental. Liquid simulation, black and red color palette, wide shot of dynamic liquid floating in zero gravity, the camera zooms forward through the liquid. Excellent, I've just crafted myself complex abstract visuals that I can use for any number of reasons. To make those visuals practically without the use of AI, I as a content creator would have to have a foundational knowledge and understanding of something like Unreal Engine or Blender. I would have to know how to run fluid simulations. I would have to know how to texture all of those things, light all of those things, animate the camera. My computer specs would have to be powerful enough to run all of those renders. And it would likely take me at least a day, if not several days to make one of those at the quality level that I'm able to get out of Gen 3 Alpha. And I made five of them in about two two minutes. Guys, time is money. This is crazy. And I don't want to read it in the comments, okay? Oh, you're just typing something. No, we're not going to go there, okay? Your time has value associated to it. That's why I always say time is money. The more time you save, the more money you make, or the more time you have to do other things. Using Gen 3 Alpha, 
I am able to stay in a creative flow state for significantly longer than I otherwise would be able to by using something like Unreal Engine or Blender. When you're sitting down and doing something very technical and nitpicky, it takes you out of the creative process and it puts you in more of like a technical process. And as a creative, I hate being sucked into that like extremely nitpicky technical thing where like the simulation's not running right or like I forgot what a certain parameter does or whatever. I can stay in that creative heightened flow state for longer because the tools that I'm using are able to give me that for longer. Does that make sense? Okay, how about generative VFX? Yes, of course. Animated burning fire that's rapidly moving on a plain chroma key green background. And now I've created myself some visual effects assets that I can use and composite in any video that I'm making. And I didn't have to go online and research a bunch of royalty free elements or like dig through a bunch of archives. I made it myself, I can control it myself, I can control what it looks like all from this platform. It's amazing. Now, when it comes to prompting inside of Gen 3 Alpha, the more descriptive and detailed you can be about the thing that you're trying to create is obviously better, but it does work with very simple prompts too. For example, a cat. Video looks great. But now if I say something like, I don't know, a front angle medium close up of a tabby cat wearing a pristine white astronaut suit seated in the cockpit of a sleek rocket. The cat's eyes are wide with anticipation, reflecting the glow of numerous control panels. Soft blue light illuminates the cramped cockpit. The camera is handheld and slowly pushes in on the cat's face. The video represents exactly what I was going for as a creator because I was really descriptive about it. So using film terminology helps a lot. When you're framing a shot, think wide, medium wide, medium close, close up, extreme close up, macro, FPV, all of those things. Speed modifiers like hyperlapse, time lapse, all of those things are gonna make a huge difference when you're prompting and you should definitely go try out all sorts of them. Color correction terms, lighting terms, speed terms, all of it, throw all of it. And not only can you do descriptive stuff with your prompting, you can actually prompt for camera and subject action as well. For example, an angry mobster standing in an alleyway, his face very serious. Then confetti drops from the sky all over him, turning his face from angry to excited. Now, if you need some help with prompting, don't worry, I got you. Head to help.runwayml.com where you can look at the Gen 3 Alpha support article that has a bunch of great information in there, including prompting tips. You can also go to academy.runwayml.com where I have put together a tutorial about Gen 3 Alpha to help you with all sorts of stuff, including prompting or you can use some of the other tools that you might already be familiar with, drop a simple prompt into an LLM and have it converted into a more complex prompt. There are plenty of different ways that you can become a better prompter. My recommendation is just gonna to be to jump into Gen 3 Alpha and throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. It really is truly an amazing video generation model. And I'm not just saying that because I work there, it really is amazing. I think you see where I'm going with this video. There's a ton of use cases that we didn't cover here today. There's a ton of examples that we didn't cover here today. This video would be so long if we were gonna cover all of them. This is a brand new emerging technology. Things are yet to be discovered about this model from me, from you, from other people out there. Definitely follow Runway on Twitter. We're always posting crazy examples of what the community is doing. Follow my YouTube channel. I'm gonna be doing a lot more Runway Gen 3 Alpha related content. We're gonna be making visual effects, throwing in B-roll, crafting narratives, making cool visuals. I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff with this. So definitely smash that thumbs up button and that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. I would really appreciate bringing you into the learn how to edit stuff family. Make sure you guys drop a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how you plan on using Gen 3 Alpha. Is it for music video visuals? Is it for crafting cinematic stories? Is it for product stuff? Let me know in the comment section below. Again, throw a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. My name is Ian. This is learn how to edit stuff and I will see you in the next one.